God can take the work that you're doing that you think, well, no, if I just get enough money, if I just get situated, and if I just get this house, and I just need to add this, and I need to be doing this work at home, and I, and I need to do all this other stuff before I could come and worry about God's house, God can make it so that you never achieve those goals that you think you're so close to getting. If I just made a little bit more money, if I just did this extra little project at home, if I just did this, once I get that done, then I'm going to come. God is just going to keep on, because God doesn't want to be put in the back seat. God doesn't want to be put in second place. He demands you to put him at the front. That's why God gets the first fruits of your increase. That's why God should get the first of your time. That's why when you wake up, you wake up in prayer and hearing from God's word. That's why you know, everything that you do, you know, in, in my house before we eat, we thank God for the food. So we do that in church too, because we give him thanks first, because he deserves it first. He deserves the recognition and the glory and the honor first, and nothing else should be coming between us and him first. It doesn't mean you can't do other things. It doesn't mean you can't do projects at home. It doesn't mean you can't, you know, plow a field and do the other stuff. Put God first. Amen. Amen. Put him first. That's good. Because when you don't, you won't be blessed for it. We said, we, you could see, I'm not going to turn there, but in Malachi, you know, he's saying, you've robbed me in tithes and in offerings, right? And he says, look, if you don't believe me, and I'm paraphrasing, right? He's saying, if you don't believe me, just test it. And see if God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. He's saying, look, just trust me and do this. Just put me first. Just do it. I don't care if you think you don't have enough money to do this or whatever. He's like, just do it and I'll bless you for it. Because when you don't, he's going to blow on the work that you're doing as we see here. He's going to make it so that, you know, you're earning all this money, but it's just like, where did it all go? And at the same point, see, the... the Man, there's so many things. I don't want to get off on so many other distractions. But you notice when, when the children of Israel had the manna in the wilderness, they had enough for every single person. Whatever their eating was, they had enough. It was sufficient. When you're serving the Lord, no matter how much money you're making, it's going to be enough. It's amazing how that works. I've been in various positions personally, just in my own life, uh, while, especially while I've been in church and serving God and doing these other things. Whether, whether it be making a good amount of money or not making very much money at all and, and ha being in different situations, you know what? I have been fine through all of it. And you know what? There's always stress. <laughs> it, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter how much money you're making. It seems like there's always stress about money. There's always bills. There's always something going on. Always. And that's fine. We've got to learn to just let that go because it's always going to be there. And you don't need to worry so much about, oh, man, and putting that priority on the money. Because God will get you through wherever you're at if you're putting him first. That's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things, he's talking about your food and your clothing and stuff like that. He said, you know what? I'll take care of that. Just put me first. Continuing on here, verse 7, thus, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. And God's trying to build his house. God wants his house built. And how do we build God's house here? This isn't talking about wood framing and, and building a building. When he's talking about his house here in our church, we're building it with people. There's work involved to do that. It's not going to build itself. You know, God's going to build the house, but he's only going to build it if we're actually doing the work that we need to be doing. And the work that we need to be doing is going out and reaching the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ and getting them baptized and making disciples. Getting people taught and trained in the ways of the Lord. That's our job. It's about other people and helping other people get right with God, helping other people receive salvation, helping other people get sin out of their lives, helping other people live right so that they can be blessed of God too. That's our job. 
That's our work. And when you start putting all of that aside, because, well, I've got my own stuff, and I've got my own deal at house, and I... God's not going to bless your work. But when you say, you know what? It's important. We're going to build God's house first. And we're going to worry about that, and that's going to be the focus. Then all the other things that you might want to get, you know what? Th that will be blessed. You say, but I'm not going to be able to spend as much time on it. It doesn't matter. If God's blessing it, you can get a lot more done in a little amount of time if God's blessing it. 